During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about how herbicides break down in soils. There are a number of factors that can really help improve herbicide breakdown. One of them is you need some heat. If the soil is frozen, you're really not gonna get much breakdown. So let's say you put something out in the fall and then the ground is frozen a few weeks later. Well, you had virtually no time for breakdown and a lot of that herbicide may be there or whatever product you used uh, may be there in the spring still. But let's say that you applied something in the spring and now you had a warm summer. So you had a long time where there are good growing conditions and a lot of things happening out in the field. Uh, whether it's weeds taking up that product or uh, whether it's microbial activity, there's a lot of things that go into that when it warms up. So that's the first factor, you need some heat. The second one I alluded to there, microbial activity, is really a big piece. We've gotta have awesome soil health. And when we do, we get faster breakdown of herbicides. So let's, for example, say you've got a lot of salt in your soil. Well, how well do you think microbes are gonna survive in a salty soil? Or what if you've got a super high pH? Maybe it's a, an eight or a nine soil pH. How well do you think those microbes are working? Not too well. So if we can improve our soil health and get better microbial breakdown of those products, and we have plenty of heat, so we have a long season to do it, well, you aren't gonna see much problem with carryover. All right, I wanna continue with Darren's soil health comments. The first thing is I can promise you, if you do not have good drainage in your soil, you will not have a healthy soil and you won't have good microbial activity, meaning you won't have fast breakdown of those herbicides. So that's all bad. You've got to fix the drainage first. Then uh, Darren also mentioned in terms of a healthy soil, you want your pH right and everything else. Well, what this means is you've got to balance your soil nutrients. You may have to invest some dollars to put some tile in the field, to get some more potassium out there or micronutrients or phosphorus, whatever you need, but get that soil in balance, get it well drained, and pretty soon you're gonna be raising a lot more crop, you're gonna have a lot more microbes in the soil, and you're not going to have near the herbicide carryover risk that you did before. The other thing that can really help you out is the sun. Many of these products that you may spray break down by photo decomposition. So let's, for example, say you laid a product in the soil surface, a, a pre-emerge weed control, for example, or even a post-emerge residual control. Well, if we get plenty of sunlight hitting that product, eventually that's going to break down as well. Darren mentioned it in passing earlier, but in terms of weeds bringing that herbicide in, let me make this simple for you. The more weeds you have, the less time that herbicide is going to stay around because you used up a lot of the herbicide, okay? So more crop and more weeds, just any plant in general to bring it in, the weed is going to die, the crop probably is going to metabolize that herbicide, but you have that and chances are that herbicide won't last as long in the soil. And all this information is important to know because you may be choosing residual herbicides that you're concerned about how quickly they're going to break down in the soil as you're trying to control our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show.